Good evening, and welcome to Direct Impact Broadcasting, the station of growth and transformation. Affiliate of Creative Broadcasting presents Leadership Tidbits with Coach T. Wilson, with your host, Taiwana Wilson, as she welcomes her guest to the studio. Welcome to Leadership Tidbits with Coach T. Wilson. I am your host, Tywana Wilson. A little bit about myself. I am your award-winning leadership maven, medical laboratory scientist by background, best-selling author, owner and chief leadership consultant at Trendy Elite Coaching and Consulting Services, executive director with the John Maxwell team, Maxwell Dis Certified Consultant, Send Out Cards Referral Partner, and co-owner of Direct Impact Broadcasting Radio Station. Before we bring on my special guest, I want to share a few announcements. I am booking guests for this podcast throughout the remainder of 2019. You can go to www.podcast.coachtwilson.com to submit your interest. Also, stop by Coach T. Wilson's store to get all of the latest books and leadership assessments, and you can go to www.coachtwilson.com to find all of those books and leadership assessments that are now on sale. Also, thank you to my media mentors, Ms. Ashley Lutzel and Ms. Kimberly McLemore of Talk Radio and TV Network, LLP. Today's special guest, Ms. Erica Holston. Erica is a wife family woman, and a friend. She has been married for seven years to her loving husband, Seth Holston, a motivational speaker, workshop facilitator, certified relationship, and communication coach. She assists singles to learn how to date, who to date, and discovering when someone is a good fit. She helps married couples to enhance their romantic connections, build their communication skills, and create lasting change by setting realistic goals. Erica has been a relationship and communication coaching for over five years. She became a coach because people saw her gifts and constantly asked her for wisdom about their relationship. As a result, she decided to open a coaching practice named Vine Life Coaching. She coaches working professionals, entrepreneurs, and people who are motivated to do their work. As a motivational speaker, she has spoken at multiple women empowerment events, vision board parties, ministries, and social groups. Her audiences are compelled to think about how they can apply real relationship and communication tools. People love how down to earth she is, and they can feel her passion when she speaks. She has graduated from Cincinnati State Technical Community College and earned an associate degree in business management. She also graduated from Wilmington College and earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in business management. Her college coursework has truly helped her develop leadership skills as a professional and be relatable with others. Erica specializes in communication with active listening skills, body language, and how to be an understanding towards others. From her professional coaching experience, she requests people to discover their strengths, and to love from within authentically. Good evening, good evening. Erica, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. How are you doing, Tawana? I am doing wonderful. I'm excited to have you on tonight and to talk to you a little bit more about your leadership journey and find out more about what you're doing in your your practice. Yes, and I'm just so excited to be here with you today, and thank you for this opportunity. I definitely have been looking forward to this. Awesome. Well, let's just go ahead and and jump right in and get started. So can you tell the listeners about your leadership journey, and how did you get to where you are today? Okay, great. That's an awesome question. So um, before I became a relationship and a communication coach, I was a telecommunications account manager, and at that time, us as a team would uh, get together and we would talk about team announcements. We would highlight what was going on in the week, and then some of the team members would uh, win awards. And so during the award portion of the team meeting, the regional manager, he was basically talking about a person who was nice, 
they were authentic, they were uh, engaging with uh, business owners, and they had a very high conversion rate to upsell uh, customers. And so as I was listening to the regional manager talk, I thought to myself, like, wow, like this person sounds phenomenal. And then finally he said the award for best result goes to Erica Rainey. Well, Rainey is my maiden name, and I was floored, and I was just thinking to myself, like, wow, like I won this award, and I wasn't even expecting it. And so being a leader, basically you have to be able to do the things that you believe is right. And as you are able to do things that are right for you and are right by people, I believe that you will be able to get the results that you want and that you need. And, you know, by doing and becoming a leader, which leads me to being a relationship and a communication coach, I basically have um, been doing in my own personal life, and I help other professionals as well as individuals do things in their life strategically and for them to develop their leadership skills. That's awesome. That's awesome. It sounds like you've had a a very interesting journey to to leadership, and it was great that somebody saw uh, that in you and you were able to keep uh, moving forward uh, with that. Erica, leaders come from all walks of life and and have different skills and strengths. What skills and strengths do you possess that you feel like have been the most important on your leadership journey thus far? Okay, so one of my leadership skills that I think that many leaders of all walks of life need to obtain is being aware of who you are, what are your capabilities, Uh, discovering your strengths, uh, being brave to even work on, excuse me, some of your weaknesses, and being willing to walk through the process even when things become hard. Um, I believe that every leader does not uh, give up when the tough gets going because they have to dig deep from within. And I think that that's a skill set that cannot be taught I believe that, you know, that's a skill set that uh, most leaders are born with. Um, And if someone is willing to be taught that, well, I think that they would have to be developed by a leader who is able to help that person cultivate the leadership skills from within them. But I would just say that in summary that some of the leadership skills that I believe that leaders need to obtain from all walks of life is being aware of who you are, where it is that you want to go, and when the tough gets going, to dig deep from within, and also, too, to never give up. Um, We live in a society where everything is instantaneous, and we could, you know, want to have uh, instant gratification, but that's not a true leadership style. The true leadership style is to say, I will do whatever it is that I need to do because I have everything within me. Yeah, that is so true. I mean, leadership is tough. It's it's tough being, you know, being a leader. It's tough being in uh, leadership roles where you have people following you. And you're right. You have to be able to dig deep, dig uh, within yourself, because if not, there are going to be times when you want to give up, where you want to uh, stop, where you, you know, don't want to keep going on. And when you have other people that are following you, they're counting on you. Uh, to to really dig deep. So that's a great point uh, that you mentioned that. And then do you feel like that? Do you feel like that's been helpful for you in your uh, practice as you are are helping uh, your clients and and other people, uh, you know, with their communication and and on their journeys? Yes. Um, I would say, sorry. No, go ahead. You're fine. Okay. Yeah, I I would just say, you know, I believe that digging deep is my specialty, especially, you know, with some of the life experience that I've had, and I know what it uh, takes, and as a leader and even as a coach, the way that I help people to dig deep is to build upon the first block 
meaning that I will ask, you know, my client a question, and I will ask them to go deeper. And once they're able to go deeper, they can elaborate on either a feeling, a strategy, or a goal. And by them doing that, you know, they are able to transition within, you know, a matter of 60 minutes. And, you know, at the end of the coaching session, I will ask them, so, you know, you came in this way, but I believe what I'm seeing is a brand new person. I believe that we are helping develop a new skill set. And when I am able to ask people questions to help them to dig deep. By the end of the session, you know, they do have a moment of gratefulness and gratification because they didn't see, you know, the end result. But because I'm a leader and I I know what it takes and because I'm able to have specific insight in a person's life by having that insight as well as that laser focus and being able to pull those things out of people and helping them to dig deep that, you know, I believe that that helps them to lead to, you know, that gratefulness and that gratification. And so I just basically just say that is that sometimes, you know, when we dig deep, you know, some people can say, well, that's all about pain and that's all about being uncomfortable. And one of the things that I have is is that it's okay to be uncomfortable, but get comfortable by being uncomfortable because when you are willing to be uncomfortable that no matter what the change is no matter what the transition is no matter what it is that you have to do by being comfortable with the uncomfortable that you can conquer anything in life absolutely absolutely I love that get comfortable being uncomfortable I, that's mm-hmm. one that I say a lot because if you were comfortable, you probably have stayed too long. <laughs> <laughs> and so that is that is one that I definitely uh, definitely live by is is being uncomfortable because uh, a lot of times we can go through life and once we get comfortable, then we know as leaders we are not growing uh, because if you are growing, then there will be those points where you're uh, uncomfortable. Uh, and moving forward and not stagnant. So that's awesome. In your business, Vine Life Coaching, you coach and teach on effective communication and its importance to both our personal and professional relationships. Can you elaborate on some of these necessary communication skills for our listening audience? Yes. You know, It goes without saying that I think that listening is a very important communication skill set that takes a lot of practice. And I would like to give you an example as to how someone can enhance their listening skills, and that would be to paraphrase. So, for example, if you're talking with someone and that person is telling you how their day went or they're telling you, you know, some of their concerns, you can paraphrase after that person has finished their sentences or whatever it is that they are saying, you can paraphrase by saying things like, so what I hear you saying is, or you could even have the option of saying, of, um, let me make sure that I heard you correctly. So when people are able to paraphrase with those two examples, you know, it leads the other person to know that you understand them. And when you understand people, you know, that builds a rapport, that builds trust in your relationship, whether if it's personal or professional. And when you are able to build that understanding that you have an authentic connection. And, you know, by having an authentic connection, it helps you to grow with that person. So whether if it's your colleague in your career or you're networking with someone or even your personal relationships, you know, with those uh, skills, those communication skills and relationship skills that I just spoke about, from listening to paraphrasing to understanding, building trust, as well as having that authentic connection, that that will help you to have true relationships, and that can also help you to grow in your relationships. 
relationships. And, you know, as a coach, I'm all about growing. I'm all about growing for myself. I'm all about helping others to grow, whether that's professionally as well as helping my clients to grow because, as you said before, you know, we can't become stagnant in life, but we have to be, do- we have to be willing to do what it takes. Absolutely, absolutely. That's good. So be learn to paraphrase. That that's critical because a lot of times we uh we listen but we are listening to respond and not necessarily listening to understand and hear. So that's a, a great uh piece of advice uh to understand and really take in because you're right. People want to know that you're listening, they want to know that you understand them. And what better way to build rapport and trust is to know that you are really active listening uh, and, and not just listening to provide a response. So that's a great uh, tool uh, and a great piece of advice that, that you give. Are there other uh, tools in regards to communication and listening that the listening audience could benefit from? Yeah, like like when you had just mentioned about, you know, you don't listen um, to respond, but you really listen to authentically to listen to someone. I guess, like, to add to that, I would just say that, you know, someone or people need to be really genuine about connecting with other people. And meaning is that, you know, you let someone else know that you are interested in what they have to say and not just to be motivated like, oh, well, this is about me. This conversation is going to benefit me. Let's start to think about conversations on, you know, I'm going to be interested on in what you want to talk about. I'm going to be interested, you know, on how we can build together So whether if that's building a relationship, whether if that's, you know, building a team or building an organization or a company, whatever that looks like for you, then I would say, you know, having that authentic authentic connection and being able to be truly interested in what other people have to say, that that can help you further your relationships, that can help you further your career, and that can definitely help you further your leadership skills. Absolutely, absolutely. That's one of the things that I find with working with my team. That's one of the things they want to know that I'm listening. They want to know that I'm engaged. And I I feel like that's probably one of the the strengths that I've been able to have uh, as a leader is being able to uh, connect uh, with that team by listening. So that's that's great advice and and wisdom that you uh, just shared with the listening audience. You serve as a coach to many. What role has having a coach and or mentor have on your own life? And is there a criteria that you choose uh, when you're looking for coaches or, or mentors for your own personal life? Yes, I, I definitely. I, I've had a lot of mentors and coaches in my life, more mentors than coaches than you know, over, you know, 20-something years. And I would just say, you know, some of the things that I look for in a coach is someone who has the life experiences that I need to learn from, meaning is that, you know, if I can't learn something from someone, I really don't want them to be my mentor, but I've always been in a mind state like what is it that I can learn, how is it that I can build on my skill set, and where am I going? And so for the people who in life, you know, have those experiences or the skill sets that I want, those are the people who I want to be attached to. And then I also look for mentors and coaches who are honest, meaning that I don't need someone to fluff me up. I don't need someone to lie to me, but I definitely want someone to be able to be honest with me. And then, again, here's that authentic word. I need someone to be real with me, authentic, and to love me for who I am because I'm a very lovable person, but I also, too, know how to love people, and I think it's a gift of mine. Um, And then lastly, I would say is that, you know, for someone to have the capability to help me um, because I believe that there are many coaches, mentors, and 
uh, leaders who are very busy. But if someone is able to uh, carve out time for me, that I will make sure that I won't waste their time and I will make sure that I can maximize my time with them and to and to also let that leader or that coach or that mentor to know that I value them. And so those are the types of things that I look for in a mentor is, you know, life experiences, them being authentic, them being honest, and for them to help me to uh, level up in my own business, help me to level up in my own personal development. Because, you know, once they are able to pour into me, then I can help create leaders um, and pour into them because I believe that leadership is an ongoing giving uh, process. And then when it comes to, you know, do I believe is if a mentor or a coach is more important than the other, I wouldn't say so. I would say more or less that a mentor to me is more lifetime, meaning is that, you know, that person sees something special in me and I see something special in them. So that person is willing to give value to me and I'm willing to give value to them at whatever capacity that that may be. And so as we're building this relationship, you know, I've noticed that, you know, I've had mentors for 10 and 20 years. And then when it comes to coaches, I think that sometimes coaches are more short-term, meaning is that I will hire a coach to help me, whether if that is to build my business or for me to dig deep or to, to set bigger uh, goals at whatever capacity that that may be. And so once I'm able to reach that goal or once I'm successful – by having that strategy that we've been able to implement. Once I'm able to reach that, I call that success. And as I call that success, well, I might outgrow that coach and I might need to hire a, a, um, a higher level coach. And it, and it doesn't diminish that relationship. It doesn't diminish that uh, coaching program. But what I will say is that, you know, a coach is someone to me is more short term and, I can learn everything that I can with that person, but then I would probably move on to a higher level coach. And so in summary, I would just say that mentors and and coaches are very important. They can definitely help you with your life goals, with your life strategies, as well as your leadership skills. And I would definitely hire a coach for me. I have a coach now. And then when it comes to mentors, I have about three to four mentors, and each of my mentors has a specialty, meaning that I have a leadership mentor, I have a ministry mentor, I have a confidence mentor, and I have a mentor that is pretty much good in everything. And so each mentor brings something different to the table, and as they bring something different to the table, I value and I love each and every one of them. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm happy that you said that, that you have various mentors in different capacities. And and you're right. I mean, the relationship between your mentors and coaches uh, are, are different. I mean, mentors a lot of times provide you with access. They provide you with their own personal uh, expertise. Uh, you know, and, and the mentorship could be one of a relationship where there's no cost. It could be one where there is a cost uh, that's tied to it. But I think you have to be clear on what you need at, at any given time and whether a coach or mentor would be uh, most beneficial for you at that time in that space uh, of your life. But being very clear about time is important as you mentioned, because you don't want to uh, waste anybody's time. Everybody's busy. Uh, and so those are some very good good tidbits that you shared with us. And it sounds like that uh, there's really no value in having one or the other, but both are, are critical and necessary to success. Most definitely. So when you look back over your career, when you look back over your uh, your practice, what has success taught you? Well, let me um, – that's, that's a really good question. I, I, I would like to start off with the definition of success to me, and that would be to, to set a goal or a strategy and being able to achieve the things that I set out to do, but then also, too, to learn each and everything that I need to learn. 
And the way that I learn is, is that after I have gained that experience, that I look back and I reflect on the things that I have learned. And as I look back and I reflect on those things that I have learned, then I am willing to build upon those things and to implement new strategies. And so I just think that success has a cycle and it has a growth process. So it leads me to this, is that success has taught me is that it takes time to get the results that you want. And, again, we live in a society where we want things right now or we have a microwave success mind state, but that's not true. Success actually takes time to develop. It takes time to develop your leadership skills, your communication skills, and it takes time for you to grow. And so I would just like to encourage all the listeners is to take the time that you need to grow at whatever it is that you need to do. And don't be afraid if things are taking a little bit longer, but even if things take a little bit longer, that hopefully you can reach a stage in your life where you can be grateful to learn that everything that you had to go through, you had to go through it for a reason. And as you went through that, it's okay to um, learn everything that it is that you need to learn. And so um, when it comes to failure, I, I don't, not to say that I'm being cocky, but failure isn't a word that I necessarily acknowledge. And here's why. The reason being is because is that, you know, if I am willing to try I'm willing to strategize or to uh, set a goal, and I'm willing to do what it takes, that I am going to learn something. And not only am I going to learn something, but I can build on what it is that I have learned. And so as, I am, as I'm able to do that, that, that right there is success. Success to me is learning. Success to me is being, having a teachable mind state. Success to me is having results. And so I don't believe that there is anything in life that we fail, but failure is a mind state. But if we are willing to take on a mind state like, you know, I am going to have a mind state that I am teachable. I am going to have a mind state that I can learn anything if I am willing to do what it takes. Awesome. I love that. I love love how you – uh, eloquently put that uh, you're right. You know, the part of the journey is is learning, is learning and, and moving and moving forward. So I love that. I love uh, what you have learned. In a time where we are asked to to be our best in our careers and be great role models, great parents, it's very easy, very very easy to get stretched too thin. What strategies would you give to our listeners who are struggling to maintain that work-life balance or work-life harmony or however people want to put it, <laughs> but that, that, that whole balance thing? What right. advice would you, get, would you give people? Yeah, well, you know, life and life we need to, um, like you just said, we need to balance things. And so the two things that I want to elaborate on Um, The first one is prioritizing, prioritizing your time um, by knowing what it is that you need to do for you, meaning is that what is going to bring you the most value. So let me give you an example. Let's say for the last two years you've been working really hard in your career. You've been working really hard with your leadership skills and everything else, but you haven't carved out time to take a vacation, but if, if you are able to take a vacation, you know that you would be able to refuel, recharge, and rejuvenate. And so if you are able to carve out time to take that vacation and to create work-life balance for you, that you will notice that if you are able to do those three things, refuel, recharge and rejuvenate that once you take that time and you come back to your to-do list, to your career, and to launch whatever it is that you need to launch, that you will notice that you will have 
more self-awareness, that you will have more um, focus, and that you can even accomplish more because you are willing to prioritize your me time. You are willing to prioritize that vacation and to value yourself. And then secondly, I would say is that, you know, sometimes in life that we need to take a pause, meaning, you know, we have a million things to do. You know, you got to pick up the kids. You, you have to take care of your family. You have to do things for your career. You may even work late nights, and, you know, the list goes on. But, you know, if we constantly are on the go, 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 and we don't take a pause or we don't take a break, you know, from things, then, you know, we can start to burn out. And so it leads me to, you know, to encourage, you know, the listeners to to understand is that, you know, if you can look at, you know, your day or if you can look at the month or the year, you know, see if there's anything that you could take a small break from or see if there's anything that you can pause from, meaning is that when you are able to take a break or a pause, you know, from things that, again, it can help you to refuel, recharge, and to rejuvenate. And thirdly, I would say this, is that, you know, we sometimes get in a mind state that it only I can do it. Because when I do it, I do it the best. But as leaders, when we are able to help other leaders to step up, that that can help take things off of our shoulders and put it on someone else's shoulders. But because you were willing to pause by taking a break and putting that to-do list on another leader's shoulders, that you can help create another leader and as you are able to create another leader, you're able to rest. So I know I said a lot, but I think this is so important for us to realize those three things. Absolutely. Uh, refuel, recharge, rejuvenate, and take a pause. That is so true because you can go and go and go, and at some point if you don't stop and do those things, you either you're going to take a pause on your own or you will be paused. And so a lot of times we don't like the latter, so we definitely want to make sure that we uh, we take that pause uh, on our own before we are paused. Uh, and so for yourself personally, how do you manage to do that? Do you schedule that time for yourself? I was recently on a panel, and that was one of the questions that came up because people all over are struggling with this with this balance, work-life balance, and priorities and commitments and values. Uh, and so there was a variety of techniques. Some people said they actually schedule the time. They put it on their calendars. Uh, Coach Erica, what are you doing? Yes, I have, um, on Saturdays, I shut everything down. Saturdays is a family day for me. Saturdays are, you know, maybe having a spa day, maybe, you know, having a day where all I do is um, just sit on that couch and just enjoy myself or whatever sounds good to me or whatever comes to my mind and um, whatever it is that I want to do, those are the things that I do. But, you know, Saturdays are a good day for me. And then also, too, sorry about that, dog. Um, then also, too, I would just say that during the work week, I, you know, have like an hour to two hours where, you know, I'm able to schedule that time. And as I'm able to schedule that time, I'm able to recharge, re- refuel, and rejuvenate. And it's so um, rewarding because it helps me to get – a new layer of focus, not only that, you know, I can show up and be a better version of myself. And if I'm able to show up and to be a better version of myself, I know that I can help you to become a better version of yourself. Absolutely, yes. In order for us to to help others, we have to make sure that we are our best. So you are absolutely right. As a say all the time when you board an airplane, they tell you to put your mask on first before you try to help those around you. Mm-hmm. So, 
So, Erica, part of the leadership journey includes being confident in our abilities, our skills, and our expertise. How can the next generation of leaders build up that confidence so that they can thrive and shine in whatever leadership or management roles that they uh, take on in the future? That's, that's part of it is, is being confident. So what, what strategies would you give uh, to our emerging leaders on, on building that confidence? Yeah, so when it comes to building confidence, you know, just know – uh, what you are uh, capable of and whatever it is that you need to do to strategically move forward, that's what you do. And, you know, one of the things that I see as a coach is, you know, uh, colleagues, you know, having a competitive spirit and just to say, you know, well, I'm the next um, one in line and I don't even know why you're trying out for this position when I'm the most qualified and so for the person who's out there and you are, um, you're confident and you know your capability, um, don't allow any uh, colleague or anyone who is trying to diminish your skill set, don't allow them to diminish your uh, shine, but know that everything that you need to do that, you know, you are able to accomplish those things and, and to stay confident and to also to to uh, strategically plan, and if that means is that, you know, you need to uh, bring to your leaders' attention that, hey, I'm working, I've seen this problem, and I'm working on this issue, and because I'm working on this issue, here are the results that I was able to uh, get, and as a result of that, you know, we can actually set into place a new system. And when we set this uh, put into place for a new system, that we will um, be able to overcome this issue because we are a forerunner of this issue. And so if we are able to strategically, you know, plan and we can bring to our leaders exactly our capabilities and to let them know that we are problem solvers and, again, to not allow the naysayers or people who want to diminish your shine, don't allow that to get in your way, but continue to be confident, continue to encourage yourself, continue to uh, put people around you who is uh, willing to support the life vision that you have. Because in leadership, we all need support. And if you have the uh, correct support system, that's, that's going to help you to shine. That's going to help you to thrive. And nothing can stop you. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're right. Your support system matters. Who you have in your circle matters. Who's in your top five matters. It all matters uh, in regards to your feeling confident about your abilities, you feeling confident about your expertise, uh, and you're feeling confident as a leader. So absolutely. Uh, in your practice, uh, Vine Life Coaching, you focus on both the relationship side of it and the communication side uh, of it. Uh, especially in regards to um, marriages and families. You want to talk a little bit more about your practice and, uh, you know, a little bit about uh, your clients, the, the kind of clients that you serve in your programs. Yeah, so the kind of clients that I serve in my um, programs are, you know, people who are dating and they are frustrated with, the dating results that they are getting. So, you know, dating has definitely changed in this day and age. And, you know, a lot more people are, you know, uh, career driven. And um, by being career driven, you know, sometimes you may not um, be able to carve out the time, you know, to be able to date. And so, you know, I'm able to help people to prioritize with their uh, life and as I'm able to help people to prioritize, you know, with their life and to ask them, you know, what's really important to you and when it comes to dating, what's important to you to, you know, um, possibly, you know, meet that spouse that you um, want to meet. And then when it comes to marriages, you know, there's a breakdown as far as, like, communication. And, you know, earlier we talked about work-life balance. And, you know, um, with the work-life balance, 
you know, uh, many um, couples are frustrated because they have so much work to do. And because they have so much work to do, um, the other uh, spouse doesn't feel valued because of their uh, workload. And so I um, help uh, couples to connect on a intimate level, on a deeper level, whether that's intellectually or romantically. And by doing that, you know, I'm able to help couples to build their marriage, to build the family, to help them build the um, career path that they want to because, you know, even though we're talking about marriage and um, relationship skills as well as communication skills that, you know, um, our careers are part of that. And so by helping people to strategically, you know, move forward and to strategize and to become clear about things and to understand each other, that that helps them to gain successful results. Absolutely. And and we all know that if there's an imbalance in those relationships and those personal relationships at home, it does carry over into the professional uh, arena, into your career, into the workplace. And so is it, that's very important that you are, are working on both that aspect because really when we think about leadership and personal growth, it kind of goes hand in hand and that we need that balance. We need that order for everything uh, to be uh, in alignment. Yes. So that's the awesome work that, that you are doing with your uh, what your couples, what you are doing is that I, I look at it as part of a ministry in your practice. So what tidbits of wisdom can you leave our listeners with that they can use in both their uh, personal and professional lives, including any reading uh, that they should consider adding to their to their toolbox? Okay, yeah. So um, as far as like – uh, strategically uh, moving, you know, through life, I believe, you know, there is a uh, saying, and that is, um, if you plan to fail, you fail to plan. And, you know, when you are able to, you know, plan out, you know, where you want to go for your career, or even your personal goals that you're setting yourself up for um, success. And so my number one recommendation is to have a 90-goal, 90 90-day 90 goal plan, a year goal plan, as well as a, a two-year goal plan, because when you are able to um, see the vision and you are able to know exactly where it is that you want to go, whether if it be personally or uh, professionally, that that is going to help you to um, further the results that you want uh, for your life. And so when it comes to um, book recommendations, I would just um, recommend, um, I like Elima uh, Van Zant, and uh, she wrote a book called um, Get Over It, and it just basically, you know, just helps you to uh, heal from the heart stuff meaning is that, you know, we can go through life facing difficulties and um, not knowing exactly how we can get over things, but if we are willing to um, heal from things, that we can actually become successful in life. Absolutely, absolutely, because there are so many times that we, we don't get over it uh, and, we, and we harvest those feelings. You know, especially if something happened in our personal life, if something happened early in our careers, if something happened at an employer, you know, sometimes we just hold on to those things, uh, and and it really stunts us on our journeys going forward. So that's a a good recommendation. So, Erica, what's next for you? What's next for you in your your personal or professional space that – uh, that that's good that the listeners should know about. Yeah, so what's next for me is, um, you know, I've, I have a uh, pretty much a line of workshops as well as uh, speaking engagements um, coming up on September the 26th. I have a 
the Ultimate Relationship Workshop, where we're going to be talking about work-life balance. We're going to be talking about, you know, dating and communication skills. And I truly want to help people to understand uh, what it takes to get the maximum results that they want or that they need in their life. And then also, too, I'm going to be having a Level Up Mastermind where I'm going to be helping uh, professionals, again, with their communication skills to help them set realistic goals and to position themselves as leaders, whether if it's in their homes or even in their careers. And I'm going to be launching this in November. So I'm very excited to help people to develop themselves, help people to uh, become a aware about some things and even some issues that, you know, they may not be willing to face on their own, but to have a coach or to have someone who is authentically caring and who wants to support them during their process, I definitely would um, love the opportunity to be that uh, person um, for them. Awesome. So for your workshop, this on September 26th, the Ultimate Relationship Workshop. Where will mm-hmm. that be? Do, is it is it virtual? Is it on site? Yeah, so it's at Cove Works, which is in Covington, uh, Kentucky, and um, I can um, I can give the the address if uh, people would like to email me, and you can email me for more information at info at vinelifecoaching.com, and that's V-I-N-E, lifecoaching.com. Awesome. And so how can I, how can our listeners stay connected with you uh, and continue to follow you on your leadership journey? Yes, yeah, so people can stay connected with me either by searching for Erica J. Holston on Facebook, or on LinkedIn, um, I always, you know, have things that I like to encourage people. I even go Facebook Live or even live on LinkedIn um, because I definitely want to help support people on their personal as well as professional journey. And then on top of that, I would like to uh, connect with people by inviting you to a 20-minute coaching strategy session with me. And if you would be interested, you can text Level up at area code 513-239-7496. Awesome. That is awesome information. Hopefully our listeners have taken that your web information and your email so that they can stay connected with you. It sounds like you're going to have an awesome workshop on September 26th, the Ultimate Relationship Workshop. Also, make sure that you are staying tuned to Erica's Level Up Mastermind, which she will be launching in November. So, Erica, we could talk for, I'm sure we could talk longer, and especially once we, we talk about relationships and communication. Those are topics that, uh, that I love to talk about in regards to leadership. But unfortunately, our time today is coming to a close. So I wanted to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to give me the opportunity to interview you. It has definitely been an honor and a pleasure to have you as my guest. So I wish you nothing but continued success and many blessings on your journey ahead. Yeah, well, thank you so much for inviting me. I greatly appreciate it, and I definitely enjoyed myself. Awesome. I look forward to working with you and talking with you again in the future. Yes, me as well. So thank you, listener audience, for tuning in to tonight's show with my special guest, Ms. Erica Holston, where she shared with us, leadership is an ongoing process. You want to make sure in regards in regards to communication that you are truly interested in listening. Uh, Be aware of who you are. Sometimes you have to dig deep from within because leadership is hard. Never give up. Make sure you get comfortable being uncomfortable. When you're listening and communicating, learn to paraphrase. 
especially as it regards to communication, because it allows people to know that you understand them. It helps to build the rapport and trust. In times when we're asked to do so much, we need to make sure that we take a pause, that we refuel, recharge, and rejuvenate. Make sure you have mentors and coaches in various aspects of your life. Look for people who are going to be honest with you and authentic with you. Prioritize your time and your life to figure out what's going to give you the most value. And remember, success has a cycle and a growth process. It takes time to grow and to develop. So if you are interested in what you heard tonight or you want to be in on previous or on new shows, you can subscribe to the podcast at www.podcast.coachtwilson.com. If you are thinking about starting your own podcast or radio show, I would love to help you. I would love to talk about some options and, and have you on this platform. You can send me an email at DI Broadcasting. That's D I B R O A D C A S T I N G at Trendy Elite LLC. That's all one word T R E N D Y E L I T E L L C dot com. Please tune in next week to hear from another amazing leader. Until then, have a good evening. Thank you, friends, for tuning in to another episode of Leadership Tidbits with Coach T. Wilson, where Taiwana speaks with leaders who share nuggets of wisdom that you can use in your personal and professional life. Follow her on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Coach T. Wilson. Connect on LinkedIn or visit www.coachtwilson.com. And remember, in life, learn as much as you can, appreciate often, and lead fearlessly. 